Hello there, my name is Kevin Yoakum, and I'll be your uh, instructor for General EMP this fall. Um, so you're going to land on Bright Space. This is uh, where you'll be able to find your total grade. Uh, you'll also find the syllabus and uh, some other information. The course YouTube channel link is in there. Uh, I put the lecture slides in there. And then you can also link to the McGraw-Hill assignments. And all of the work you'll do this semester is going to be in the McGraw-Hill Connect. So you're going to need to purchase uh, or attain access to McGraw-Hill Connect. You'll also use that program for advanced a &P. So, um, So yeah, two semesters. Uh, you can get it directly from the bookstore uh, using your financial aid or they accept cash or credit uh, or debit and then uh, you can also purchase it to th directly through McGraw Hill so you do have a couple of options there the other thing uh, they do have a two-week free trial so if you're having issues attaining it uh, in the immediate uh, you can get a two-week free trial that will get you started and uh, from there, you can, uh, once you do purchase it, it keeps all of the work that you've done uh, while you were in that free trial period. Uh, so anyway, let's get to it. Um, let's see. Uh, and by the way, Brightspace, uh, this is uh, really just the second semester that we've used it. Uh, we were using Blackboard for several years. And this summer was the first semester that we uh, used Brightspace. So um, there may be a few uh, bumps uh, along the way, but for the most part, uh, uh, for general AMP, there shouldn't be too many uh, issues because uh, most of what you do uh, is in the McGraw-Hill Connect. So uh, so you can start off, uh, which, and, and by the way, the landing page, uh, here's the course link for McGraw-Hill Connect, and we'll take a peek at that here shortly, but I do want to go through the syllabus uh, first. So when you click on any of those tiles on the main page, you're going to be uh, directed right to this content area. So you'll be able to access all of the content uh, for the entire course uh, from this spot. And by the way, I think most of you are prepping uh, to take the HESI. So, um, I really emphasize a lot of multiple choice questions throughout uh, the assignments you'll do in McGraw-Hill, but I also uh, recommend, uh, and I'll click on this, there are some HESI prep tools. Uh, the Gateway Library has uh, the online library and the physical libraries at the three main campuses. Uh, they have HESI prep uh, books that you can check out. They have ebooks that you can check out. So you're definitely, so I'll go through some of that with you. I think that's probably most of your uh, anxiety uh, this semester is probably leading you to the HESI. So I want to do as much as I can do to ensure that uh, at least on the anatomy and physiology section of the HESI, that you'll have success. So it does come down to you doing the work, of course, but I will provide you with uh, the avenues that uh, you should probably think about taking uh, to get to uh, getting uh, a relatively high score on the anatomy and physiology portion. Repetition is the key to success. So if you have not had any anatomy and physiology in the past or have limited experience with it or uh, with biology or the sciences in general, I definitely urge you to uh, follow uh, the videos that I have, uh, the lecture videos and my lecture slides and take notes from those. You can also use the OpenStax uh, virtual text, which I'll show you that as well. Uh, so you have options for attaining information. YouTube uh, has a wealth of, of uh, videos. Uh, Crash Course is a really good uh, channel in YouTube. So I'll show you some of those as well. 
But again, the HESI is, I think, probably what most of you are going to be focusing on uh, as kind of the reason uh, for taking general A&P, uh, as well as, you know, of course, using it uh, in the field. If you're going, which most of you, I assume, are going into the allied health professions, uh, you know, anatomy and your knowledge of anatomy is, is going to be important, uh, and certainly physiology. Now, this semester in general AMP, we really do focus on the anatomy uh, of the body and uh, from really the cellular level all the way up to uh, the organism level and the organ systems. Now, when it comes to how the body systems come together and and function, that is more what we do in advanced anatomy and physiology. So we'll get into that uh, next semester. For now, we do discuss a little bit of physiology. Your HESI may have a few uh, questions uh, regarding physiology, but for the most part, uh, basic fundamental knowledge of anatomy is going to be important. And again, repetition. So I would recommend not uh, logging in once a week and spending a couple hours and or an hour and then being done. I would, but I mean, if that's all you have time for, that's all you have time for. I understand, but you could probably fit some some moments throughout the day, seven days a week, five minutes here, ten minutes there, fifteen minutes just fit those little increments of time that you would normally spend maybe, you know, putzing around on YouTube or, you know, maybe uh, Facebook. I don't know if any of you, if, you know, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it might be that you do with any other media. Maybe you watch TV shows and you stream, uh, you know, Netflix or whatever. Well, you know, if you can spend at least 10, 15 minutes a day with your mindset on anatomy and physiology, you're going to be doing yourself a big favor. Uh, so really start to think more in an anatomy mindset moving forward, because you're all going to be working in the healthcare field uh, whether it's nursing, surgical tech, uh, physical therapy assistant, dental hygienist, um, whatever it might be, an EMT, paramedic, your brain is going to be thinking anatomy and anatomy and physiology eventually. But for now, we're going to focus on anatomy. So get in that mindset daily. There are tons of YouTube videos uh, tons of, uh, oh, and uh, Quizlet is another uh, landing spot where you can uh, create or look at other uh, note cards and take little uh, quizzes. But again, get in that mindset at, uh, at all times. All right, so here's your syllabus. This is pretty standard. Uh, for gateway, most of your syllabi are going to look something like this. Um, we go until December 9th. That's my only due date for all of your work. So you can work on this course at your own pace. It's a good idea. You have a lot going on, every single one of you. You have other classes. You're preparing for the HESI. You probably have jobs. You probably have family. You probably have a whole bunch of stuff going on in your lives. So... You might have gateway to success this semester, or maybe you've taken it in the past. But the idea is to really uh, create a, a, your own uh, prioritized list of things that you need to get done. And now you need to get some general anatomy and physiology done each day and pre in preparation for the HESI. So time management uh, and prioritizing is going to be something that you're going to want to start doing if you haven't already. And so I extend a lot of freedom to you to make those decisions. And uh, I have recommended 
checkpoints uh, in the form of a course calendar that you can certainly follow to guide you. Uh, but again, you know, you are adults that are going into a profession that uh, is extremely professional and requires a lot of accountability and responsibility. So now is the time, if you haven't already, uh, to really start thinking in those terms. So for me, you have one due date, that's December 9th. But as I said a second ago, you will have a course calendar that we'll look at that has checkpoints that you can follow. Uh, if you need to meet with me in Zoom, uh, there's the link to my Zoom room. Um, I'm available these time slots, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, between 1030 and 1130. And you can email me and set up a time for those between those slots. Uh, if none of those work for you, if the evening works better, I am uh, available uh, in the afternoons and the evenings, uh, uh, some days as well. Not every day, but some days. So uh, I do have a few obligations in the evenings. Uh, but anyhow... If you do need to meet in Zoom, if we can't get your answers uh, or questions answered through email communication and you need further uh, explanation and discussion, I can certainly meet with you in Zoom. Um, so what are you going to do in here? Well, again, you're going to look at the micro scale uh, all the way up to the gross uh, or what we call macro scale. We're going to look at what is it. Uh, we're going to break down 12 uh, major body systems and look at the cellular level uh, and then the tissue level and then the organ level and see what uh, what each of these body systems are made of. Um, open stacks. Here's a, the download uh, or the uh, link for open stacks. Now, you don't need to... Now, I'm not, again, I'm not going to tell anybody what to do uh, because you know what kind of learner you are. If you like having a physical copy of a textbook, OpenStax is generally uh, one of the more uh, cost-effective ways to go. I believe you can purchase it from the bookstore. You can also get it from Amazon and probably eBay. Um, if you're looking for uh, a potentially even more inexpensive route than that. Uh, if you go to thrift stores, uh, Goodwill, Salvation Army, um, there are others uh, around that have used books. I have had good, oh, and there's a website called thriftbooks.com. I shop there quite a bit for different books. Um, you could probably get an older edition of an anatomy and physiology physical textbook for uh, under 20 bucks. So certainly at a Goodwill, you might find one for like three, two or three or four or five bucks. But, you know, anatomy hasn't really changed a lot. Believe, believe it or not, over the, a lot has changed, right? Uh, over the last uh, couple of years and a couple of years before that, we we're in a rapid uh, pace of change. Well, anatomy hasn't really changed much. So um, you could get an anatomy and physiology textbook that's 20, 30 years old, and it's going to be just as valuable really as, as one today. Again, when we're looking at what is it? So now physiology, they have made some uh, advances somewhat uh, in physiology over the the years, but even then, uh, you know, you're not going to be, uh, you know, you you can get by with a physical text that you find at Goodwill uh, or thrift books. But anyway, anyhow, if you don't need a physical text, if you're cool reading online stuff, OpenStax is a good way to go. I'll pop that open. You can download the PDF of it, um, and you have a lot of options. So you can buy a print copy. Uh, but anyhow, table of contents, 
It goes right through uh, from the the basics, and then it gets into cells, uh, chemicals and cells and tissues, and then starts in on all the body systems. So um, I really uh, am a big fan of OpenStax. I find it to be extremely user-friendly. Uh, the graphics, uh, images, and illustrations are extremely helpful. And I also really like at the end of each chapter, uh, they have uh, some review questions, critical thinking questions, key terms. So really what I recommend to students who uh, are maybe not so, I mean, you know, reading a textbook is intimidating. You don't really, it's not like regular you know, it's not like a fiction book where you just open up page one and start reading through it. Uh, you'll pass out to, and not retain anything doing it that way. So you need to take it in small increments. And so what I have students do, and again, I recommend, these are all recommendations. I'm not telling you what to do, uh, but I, I'd recommend starting. It says chapter review at the end of each of these, but that's where I would start. So if you're going to look at, uh, we'll just start with chapter one. So if we're looking at the overview and intro to the human body, you could start right there. You could open up the intro. But like I say, you can uh, start at chapter review. So we're going to click that. So it takes me to the chapter review. Okay. So this is a breakdown of the entire chapter one. Okay. So when you read through that, you can take notes, you can uh, highlight uh, different things, make highlights and add notes. It tells you how to do that. Okay. So if you click this, it'll take you to all the way over to the chapter and it'll give you a lot more details. Uh, it'll give you images and illustrations. But again, if you want to just start, get your feet wet with each chapter, start at the chapter review. It's a lot more straightforward, gives you a summary of what's going on. That may be enough. And if you want to know more about one of these, you can certainly click it and it'll take you right to that section. Okay. And you can see all of the different information about homeostasis that it gives. Now, this is a little bit more physiology related, but it wouldn't hurt to, to certainly read through that if you'd like. I do talk about it in uh, my lecture videos as well. So anyhow, uh, the other thing that you'll find uh, are the key terms. Uh, right before chapter review, uh, they have some interactive link questions, review questions, and critical thinking questions. So if you do these um, and you want the uh, answers to these, you can uh, certainly uh, reach out and I can provide those to you. Um, they're not required, by the way. This is, would be for, for your own practice. Yeah. But anyhow, that is OpenStax. You can dive into that if you'd like. And then the other item you definitely need to get access to is your McGraw-Hill um, Connect. Oh, that's going to give me... So, well, I'll click that. This is what it'll look like from your perspective. Let me go back there. So enter your email address. Email address will be used. So it should take you something like this. So you're going to want to enter your gateway email address. Um, so I'm not a, I have a faculty account, so it's not going to let me. So, so anyway, so, but once you do that, you're going to be able to, I wonder if I got like a dummy account set up. Let's try that. Okay. Try that. 
Uh, okay, that worked. All right, so so this is what you okay. So when you click on the course link, you're gonna have to either create a McGraw Hill account or log into it. And once you do, you're gonna get to something that looks like this. Okay. So here's the two week free trial. So you can get this for two weeks for free. And then once you're able to purchase it, you enter the code that you get from the bookstore. Or you can purchase it directly from McGraw Hill. And it's actually quite a bit cheaper, I think. I don't know how much it is at the bookstore. It's 120 bucks, maybe. So there's always a markup on stuff at the bookstore. So, um, but a lot of, uh, I know I used my financial aid to purchase textbooks. When I was in college back in the dark ages, textbooks just like now were extremely expensive. I was a biology major in college. So, you know, my textbooks were four inches thick and weighed 10 pounds and cost like 400 bucks. So I didn't have that kind of money uh, as a 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old. So I use my financial aid for books, um, but you can't do that directly from the publisher. You'd have to pay with a visa or, you know, a debit card, but you do save some money. So anyway, that's what you'll do. And then once you have access you hold on to me. That's my animal bio class. Let me find ours. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. So we're here generally in P2W7A. So your st student view is going to be slightly different. Um, I don't know why it's not showing student mode, but either way, yours will look a little bit different than mine. I don't know. There, there it goes. So this is what yours will look like. And again, you're going to want to go, let me, I'm going to go into D2L too. Um, so this is what your McGraw Hill uh, is going to look like. Your McGraw Hill connect. Let me go back to bright space. Uh, let's see. Oh, and by the way, if you do purchase it from the bookstore, Make sure you follow, there are explicit directions on how to get that access code. Remember, you had the three options there. Let me go back over this one, the connect code. The bookstore, I don't think they give you this code directly. Uh, there, there are directions you have to go into. Uh, it's called Bright Wave, which is not Bright Space. I know it's confusing, but I know they used to... Anyway, you'll you'll get instructions on your receipt, um, or they'll just give you a card. Ideally, you'll get a McGraw Hill card, and then it'll have the twenty digit code. But you know, the bookstore has they've experimented with different things. Then, and I know one of their recent experiments was something called Bright Wave Bookshelf or something, and and that's how you would have to go through that to get this code. So make sure you read the directions that the bookstore gives you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. So anyway, here's desire to, or back to bright space or desire to learn. Um, you can also access your McGraw Hill assignments directly through. Um, and I have December 11th as a due date. You're, it, the class ends December 9th, but I give you guys a 48 hour kind of grace period at the end. Most of you, hopefully all of you, will be done well before that. Because remember, you work at your own pace. So you could have this course done before uh, Halloween if you play your cards right. Because yeah, the idea is you want to get, get this in your brain and get going and get ready for the HESI. So as soon as I see that you've hit that, that A range, that 90% or above, I will email you or you can email me, but... Um, 
we'll connect with each other and I'll say, wait, you're in the A range. You can keep working on the course, but once you're in the A range, I can submit your grade to the registration office or the registrar. And then at that point you can, you can, uh, you know, you're good to go for registering for the HESI. So I'm not trying to push you into, you know, doing this fast, but some of you have, uh, you know, some of you have the ability uh, timing wise to to really zoom through and get get to move at at, at that pace um but anyway that option's available like i say that i don't know what you have going on but you do so i want to keep this as as uh, pain free as possible all right so anyway you can access all of those through looks like they're kind of scattered all over the place yeah well, that's okay. I would go through McGraw Hill because it's much more set up. See, here's what it looks like. Like, I wouldn't really even use Desire to Learn. It says D2L, Bright Space, Desire to Learn. It's the same thing. Uh, but I wouldn't even bother with that. Uh, I would go uh, bookmark your McGraw Hill and access the course through here at all times. And then it'll it'll uh, input your grades. You do need to access it, I think, once through Brightspace because what it'll do is it'll me uh, mesh the course. I don't know if mesh is the word. There's a word, uh, populate. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, uh, it'll hit me. But, the, but anyway, you need to uh, combine basically your link your bright space with your McGraw Hill. So you will need to access one of these through bright space. And at that point, every time you go in here, it will populate the grade book in bright space. So anyway, uh, so there are also lecture slides. So um, I've got them separated by module. And these are in Google Slides. So you can access those there. Um, organization of the body. And then the other thing I wanted to mention too, uh, on my slides at the bottom on some of them, I have speaker notes. So you can, there's one right there that looks like that. So I can see I have speaker notes there so you can, um, you know, that might help you out too. Uh, anyhow, uh, lecture slides. And then this one, the course YouTube channel link. You can also bookmark this page or uh, go to, uh, you know, subscribe or do whatever you need to do to, to access these. But these are the videos that I have for, uh, that go with these slides. So intro to the body, and then there's the, the video where I discuss that information. Okay, so you can certainly go through that. Uh, let's go over to McGraw-Hill. So a couple of things in here. Uh, there are, besides the open stacks that I told you about, as far as e-text, there are a couple of other e-texts that you'll always have access to as well. So make sure you check these out. They're extremely uh, valuable tools. They have a lot of great information. The other thing too, you know, on uh, uh, McGraw-Hill uh, are your assignments. So they're in what they're called the APR feature. So there'll be some identification, uh, there'll be quiz questions, kind of a mix of different uh, items. So you can see identification and quizzes. And then at the end of each module, you'll have a multiple choice exam. Okay. And you can take that unlimited amount of times. Okay. So this is this is where all your points are. So let me go back to the syllabus. The whole course is a thousand points. Your goal is to get to nine hundred. I would assume because you want to get an A. I, if you get to nine hundred, uh, you get an A. I don't do. It's this. This is our department. Uh, 
grading scale. Uh, generally, though, uh, we're flexible, so each instructor can do whatever they want um, with this grading scale. We can't be, we can't go below it. I guess we can go above it. So anyway, I do A, uh, 90 and above is an A, 87 to 89 is a B plus, and then basically 80 to 87, you know, 80 to 86 is a B. So I don't do A minus or B minus. So some of you just need a B. Uh, well, all of you need, I think, at least a B. So your, your target is 800, but I would assume most of you want to get A's. So... Um, so 900 is your point value you want to go after. Uh, so anyway, you're going to have 25 point, uh, APRs, uh, slash quizzes. Those are 20, uh, uh, of those 25 a piece for 500. Then you're going to have five 100 point exams. Uh, and that's it. That's how you're going to get graded. Your goal is to dive in and, uh, grasp and understand it's plenty of work there's plenty to do so you're going to be watching the videos and uh, investigating uh, the McGraw Hill so that's your main goal uh, there are some target dates uh, you know if you haven't done any work by October 16th basically you have two weeks to do something so uh, within the first two weeks uh, you need to have at least done one assignment um, and then after that, like I say, it is work at your own pace, but I do need to see one assignment completed by uh, September 16th. Um, let's see. Hopefully none of you have to withdraw, but if you do, you have up all the way, all the way up until uh, November 15th. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, here's the course calendar. Like I say, this is recommended. Everything is due by December 11th, two days after the final day. Um, again, there is no final exam. There's no midterm exam. Uh, this is all in McGraw Hill. So um, follow this path and you'll be done uh, by December 9th. You can work ahead and be done as soon as you want to be done. But other than that, that's really all I have for you. Um, I will... Uh, be checking in um, really every day. I check into my bright space and uh, look at uh, the grades, make sure that everybody's on track. Like I say, especially the first two weeks. So I will be sending out reminders really up to uh, September 16th and reminding you to, at the very least, get this first intro to the body APR. Uh, done okay so other than that i mean if you're strapped for time at the very least get this done in the first two weeks then again if you have any questions please reach out uh i check my email uh pretty much constant not constantly but i have my phone with me all the time and whenever i get an email from gateway uh students uh or staff or faculty I get a notification. So I will reply uh, within 24 hours, typically. Um, let's see. Has he prep tools? So you can check this out. There'll be some uh, PDFs in here with some HESI practice stuff. Um, I also put these Padlet boards. These are extremely helpful as well. Students find these. Uh, and again, you don't have to comment. You can if you'd like. But I've found that, uh, and students have found that these Padlets uh, are very helpful with uh, different videos. And yeah. so the, the Padlets I created to be almost like a, an extension of my YouTube channel. So. Um, there are so many amazing YouTubers out there that put out a lot of great anatomy videos. And so um, I created the Padlets to, in essence, kind of go along with um, all of the units that you do. So each Padlet is going to be, let me go back to HESI Prep Tools. That's the one thing that, about Brightspace is, uh, so you could, is that it, 
when you go out of it, it says, so you may want to right click and click open link in a new tab and then it'll keep that like that. So, oh no, open a new window. There we go. So anyhow, you can, you can comment if you want, you don't have to, but uh, certainly it's another uh, tool for uh, accessing information on anatomy and physiology from sources other than OpenStax and, and myself. There are so many great uh, YouTubers out there talking about AMP. So anyhow, take a peek at those. Uh, the other thing I have, uh, petition dates link. So this has information about your petitioning process. So you may want to take a look at that. And let's see. Yeah, see what I mean? It makes you go all the way back. I'm trying to get used to this myself. Um, Brightspace. Uh, Hesse Prep Link. This is a good one as well. Open link and new tab. There we go. And then open a new window. That's why I have all these windows open. Because I, you know, I get in and out, in and out, right space. So this one's extremely helpful. This will have your uh, e-books for HESI Prep, uh, the McGraw-Hill Review uh, e-book. So definitely check this one out. You'll need your gateway ID for that. But there's that one. So you can download the PDF. Uh, it's got reading. You don't take all of these sections for your HESI. I think you do reading, vocab, grammar, math, and anatomy and physiology. You don't do biochemistry or physics. Okay. It tells you in the... Uh, I think it tells you what you need to do. Ba -ba -ba. Anyhow, this is the HESI prep. Because it... What I had... In this petition dates link, I think it tells you what sections you take for the HESI. So, but anyhow, that is that. If you go to Quizlet, they'll have, um, and you type in HESI into Quizlet. Here you go. This will tell you. So if I do nursing. You have to get a B minus or better in this course. Um, let's see. And you need a 75 or higher on the HESI. And you can take it as many times as you want. I thought it said somewhere what sections you were... Anyhow. Um, you can email your nursing people or it, it maybe actually, um, well, I, I don't know. That's a rabbit hole that I don't know if I'll get out of. So you can go dive down into that one. I think it's under HESI prep link. Somewhere it'll tell you what your, um, which sections you have to do. In the HESI. Um, here's some terms and identification uh, lists for module one. I don't know if, I don't think I have these available. So, because they're Google Docs, I have to change those. I don't know if those are even really that helpful uh, at this point. You have plenty to look at. So, and do. So, but anyway, if you have questions, please email me. I'll leave it there. Have a good semester. I'll check in with you. Uh, 
probably every week or so, I'll put a short uh, announcement out checking in with you. Have a good one.